Hi, I'm Marty. Um, I'm setting up a new channel called Bobby's Workshop. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is I fancy setting up a wood workshop in my basement where I'm going to hopefully make some stuff and uh, just have a bit of fun, really. We'll see how it pans out. Um, I did think it was going to be an interesting thing to hopefully, well, hopefully an interesting thing to document how I actually go about doing this. Um, I suppose we'll find out if it's that interesting or not. I do apologise for the um, gargoyle type looks at the moment. I'm suffering from some horrible allergy. We're trying to figure that out. I'm not sure you care about that, but anyway, in case you're wondering. Um, obviously, I've got a face for audio podcasts at the moment. Um, but anyway, so the first thing I'm going to try and do is come up with a way of making sure that my shop vacuum basically doesn't just die when I first start using it to get up all the wood shavings and rubbish off the, the workshop floor. So I'm going to be coming up with a cyclone system. So what I've done is I've bought the classic cyclone, a huge pot. And if you're not sure what a cyclone is, the, the, the basic premise is that you connect a normal vacuum system to the top end here. And that basically sucks air. This is all an airtight unit, or it will be once I've finished attaching this. This is an airtight drum. And the basic premise is that you pull the air through and it comes out of here. Oh, sorry, the, the suction pulls your rubbish in here. And as you can see, the tube from the top actually goes below this inlet. And the basic premise is that when stuff is sucked in here, it will actually rotate round here and drop out the bottom rather than drop down and then get sucked back up through the other tube. So that's the basic premise. Um, it's quite a simple idea once you get your head around it. And the key thing is it's based on it all has to be airtight. So what I'm trying to do here is connect this to that. I need to make sure there's going to be no air leaking out of here. And then of course I need to connect the shop back and my suction that will eventually go to the machines various things from here it's not going to be on an industrial scale it's going to be quite a light project but it'll get us off the ground so one of the first challenges of course is i need to make a hole that matches this size in this lid and then find a way to stick it on so we've got quite a simple idea fairly crude but there you go so i'm going to cut a hole in the top of here that matches that i suppose it matters if it's slightly bigger as long as it's not smaller if it's smaller then it'll, the debris that comes down here will get caught on the rim so i just need to make sure if anything it's slightly bigger so that takes a bit of the pressure off um, and obviously it just has to be no bigger than this so i've got quite a bit of play here it's not the end of the world that i get this exact um, the next challenge of course is making it airtight so i will be using silicon around here just to obviously make sure that's airtight and rather than mess around with nuts and bolts what i'm going to do is just cut a little collar out of plywood um just a basic lump of plywood i've got lying around i'm going to cut a collar about the same size as the white portion of this again making sure there's no lip on the inside for things to get caught on and then i'm just going to use wood screws to basically screw that through onto the collar which will be under the lid and that will basically be me up and running subject to plugging the vac in and all I've done first is drawn around the outside of the bottom of this I've then marked where the holes are going to need to go for the screws and then I've basically just freehand drawn a rough circle in the middle again it doesn't really matter if that's perfect as long as there's enough for the screws to get a grip on and as long as it's clearly smaller than the hole and it's going to go above it and again the point of that is the, the debris is going to fall from this way and it needs to get clear through there without catching on a lip as it falls through the hole. So that should do that. It's going to cut that out with me jigsaw. Right, so I know how crude that is, but the important thing to remember here 
is this will be above the lid of the bin. This will be below the lid of the bin. All that needs to happen is the dust and debris falling from that way, this way, just needs to be able to pass free of traction or free of, I don't know, hitting stuff here. Yeah? That will happen. And importantly, I've got all of my holes within the wood that I need from that side, so everything will be fine. Um, just need to cut the hole in the lid now. So this drill bit must be the bluntest drill bit in history. It'll certainly be going the journey. All will need chopped. seconds to cut if I'm not messing around too much let's cut the hole it needs to be bigger it'll take us a second I'll make it bigger but as you can see the hole is in the black it's far bigger but not too big it's bigger than the, the clearance that's needed for the dust to come through it's clearly a lot smaller than the top which is needed Get the rough burrs off there. This would be what type of sandpaper I'm using. It's green sandpaper. It really doesn't matter for this job. Because none of this is going to be seen or will impact in any way what's going on. What I do want to do is make sure there's actually a bit of a rough surface to make sure the silicon sticks. I don't know that scientifically, it just feels like it's something that should be done. Hey presto. What I think I'll do is I'll get these holes in, screws ready first. Then I'll put the holes through here and I'll screw it on. It just feels easier. I'm not sure it makes much difference, but it feels like the easier approach. There's many things to hold all at once. So I'm going to drill a tiny bailus hole, um, not as tiny as I would like, because of that I'm going to drill a test. I just want to basically know, and when I screw the screw in I've still got enough grip. Yeah, that's fine. Right, so. Yeah, so they all fit. They all line up pretty well. Don't have to be perfect, it's just quite a rough thing that's happening here.
doing here is hand turning so the screws are slightly nipping out because it's plastic you can do that it's easy enough just to get a slight grip on it and what that does do is give you a nice pointy metal thing to line the holes in the wood up to so you just place it over gently as such before I then tighten the screws Right, I'm not going to tighten that up fully, just want to make sure it works. Looks awful, a bit raggy arse you could say. But the key thing here is airtight, which it will be when it's siliconed, and that white hole has to be smaller than either the black or the wood. The reason for that is the debris is going to come down there and needs to be able to fall out the bottom without hitting anything. That achieves that. It's quite crude, but it's functional. I'm not going to get too excited about it at the moment. In fact, I can't get that excited about that. I'm just thinking I might just use the glue gun rather than open a tube of silicon for the sake of a couple of inches of it. Hey presto. Right, so what we've got then is an airtight container with an airtight seal where the key priority is the debris will fall down and not get caught. We've achieved that. This will get full up of rubbish. Take the lid off, empty the bucket saves your vacuum um, and again it's all on a simple premise debris comes in here starts to spin will start to fall before it then has the chance to get sucked back up that pipe um, I'm not a scientist I'm sure there's people who can explain that better than me but the key thing is it lets you get quite a lot of volume without having to keep emptying your vacuum and saves the vacuum hi there so I couldn't wait to test this of course so um, I thought I'd give it a go. So I've been testing it, it works pretty good. This is our household hoover. As you can see, it's empty. All I've done so far, Henry's recording, can you still see? It's made a very patchwork bung to connect household hoover to cyclone. So this is a bit of rubber mat, which I've chopped up. It's not absolutely airtight, but it's certainly good enough. Same again, just on here to get a whole bit of gnarly hoover cord on, put that in. So, come around this way, cameraman. Let's see, we've got a big pile of rubbish on the floor. We'll turn the hoover on. I'm gonna hoover this up and show you how much it actually goes into the hoover, the vacuum, when we're finished. Right. 
So I think we can all agree that was a big pile of rubbish. Um, let's see how much of it actually made it into the hoover. Pretty much none. So I think we can call that an absolute success. The Cyclone system, which we're going to call the Hoover Megatron 2 million, is a perfect success. Thank you to Henry for the name.